used a microphone before, so this is going to be a little new. I haven't done this in a long time. I'm, I'm wondering if uh, these nerves ever go away. <laughs> Much respect to those who do this often. I, I don't, but I've done it before. It's been a little while, like I said. Um, it's, uh, it's good to be here. It's good to be in a house. It's good to be in a place of worship. Uh, the building, the churches of people, but the building that we're in and the, and the people and the atmosphere that it provides. Uh, it's a blessing to be here where we can serve God and you can come in in any way, in any spot you are with God. Whether you never heard of him or whether you've been there for 50 years, you can come in. And our goal is to feel welcome, and I love it for that. So, um, just uh, like I said, I've done this before, but it's been a while. I'm going to check my time here because I'm going to be spot on for you guys' time. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I've been asked in the past year. I can't remember the last time I did it. I've only done it a few times. But uh, I've been asking the past year, and I had to decline. There was no uncertain terms about it. I was like, God's telling me, no, you're not, you're not in a spot right now because you, you haven't been listening to me. You haven't been hearing me. And so, you know, it's humbling, but that's where I was at. It, I didn't fall off the deep end, but, yeah, I wasn't hearing from God right. And uh, so it's, it's kind of tricky because you get in that spot. Uh, you can, you know, and, and today... I, I like to, in my walk with God, backing up a little bit, I like, rather than, than looking at some of the things where I'm like, uh, I, I nailed this, so I'm going to bring it. Most of the time, the few times I've gotten to speak, God drops, I don't bring it, but God drops it on me. He's like, hey, you're terrible at this. I need you to study. I need you to get better, and I need you to make a message out of it. So then in helping you, you can bring it to others in a way that might help them. So that's my approach here, and God was in no uncertain terms about how and what he brought to me. So I hope it works, and I hope it makes sense. And uh, so, and that's how my God works. That's how your God works. He takes a bunch of unqualified, unperfect people like me, like many of you, and uh, each one of us make up a very important piece of that puzzle. And then he uses us to build his kingdom that's made of many pieces. And then he uses us to build up one another within his kingdom. So that's what we're here for. So, like I said, I had to decline, but then as I began to start hearing from God more lately, as it was kind of stirred in me that, hey, it's kind of your turn, and what became an obligation became a blessing once again. Because when you dive into this, there is power. It's like power beyond a medication or a substance or anything can provide. There is power. Beyond a religion, this is a relationship. If you get past the crust that is religion into the relationship, there is power. That's what I'm here to bring you. So the words, uh, speaking of not hearing, kind of hearing impaired or impaired hearing, they, uh, on a different level, on a, on a physical body level, they hit home with me as well. Because my hearing is pretty lousy. I wouldn't say it's horrible, but it's not very good. I'm going to say it's probably too many, uh, too many gunshots without hearing protection. I noticed more ringing even than since Friday night. We got into a group of pigs and dumped a 30 mag, and uh, <laughs> I still hear that, that ring, and it's, it seems like everybody can hear it, but it's just me that's hearing it. It's the only noise I've got that keeps me from hearing. You get in a, a social situation, in a conversation, sometimes you can pick up most of the words, and you kind of read lips, and then the, kinda, sometimes the important parts of it you cannot hear because... You know, you can kind of see, you, you miss out on that part, so you kind of have to guess a little bit. And so you're, you're hoping you got right what they said in a loud room, but then you got to guess, and then you're on pins and needles thinking, I hope I got that right, or I hope I got their name right. And so sometimes you're right, sometimes you're not, but you kind of learn to adapt. And so you've got that physical, or I have a little bit of the physical impairment there. Not too bad, but enough that it gets to be a problem. And uh, then, you know, you enter into the, the marriage equation with the, the Y chromosome as a man. And then you, I mean, you know where I'm going. You get a little bit of uh, selective hearing mixing with the physical hearing. <laughs> and she can attest to that. <laughs> so, like, you know, that old saying, like, uh, so who starts a conversation with, did you hear anything I just said? <laughs> So sometimes you find yourself there. You're like 10 minutes in, and you're like, oh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm just now starting here. So it's obvious because, like, when, when, you see, when, when you see that she sees 
that you don't see anything she's been or hear anything she's been talking about that look that she sees on your face when you see it you're like i'm just gonna plead the fifth here because anything you say is going to be held against you so just don't say anything but so <laughs> recapping that real quick my hearing physically is not all that good and i make it worse by being selective sometimes or letting noise sometimes i hate to say it but i let i, I intentionally don't hear because i'm like my hair's not real good anyway so i'm just going to kind of like go ahead and drown out the rest of it just just say hey i can't hear and use it as a crutch so what does this have to do with the lesson well you probably get where i'm getting at there quite a bit it has to do in a way that just like I said, I wasn't hearing from God. It, it, it equates or kind of compares to sometimes how I don't hear in my own life. I need to listen more, and I need to hear more. Uh, we, we're going through a time where I need to hear from God. We all need to hear from God. Uh, just a quick example. I think it hits us in the face. If you have any kind of ranching background, some do, some don't. If you're in a fire department or anything like that, you know that we're in a horrible drought. Uh, we had our last good rain in August, which was almost a year ago. For many of these pastors, they're still waiting on their first good rain. Pastors are out of water. We're having to send cows out. About to send another truckload out this week. And I mean, these, I got them from another state. I was proud of them. They're all about to go get made hamburgers out of them. It's sad. You're selling your savings account for 50 cents on a dollar. And it's happening to people all over the place. And you got economy issues where your dollar, speaking of dollars, worth 75 cents. So we've got some times right now, we got a recession, they're saying it's about to hit us square in the face if we're not already in the middle of it. We need to hear from God. And so rather than saying, oh, woe is us, we need to stop and we need to hear from God more in a bigger way. We need to look at how to hear from God. We gotta identify our own failures like I'm doing because I'm terrible at this and that's why we're here. But as I'm hearing about hearing, that's why I'm speaking on this. So, again, rather than God giving me one of those nailed it topics, we're diving into that area that I struggle from. So more clarification on my not hearing from God during that little bit of time. It wasn't one of those, I'm a victim. Well, in my mind, I kind of was in a way, but it wasn't one of those, I've been trying, bless my heart, I've tried everything, and I'm praying on my knees every day, and I'm not hearing from God, and he's just not talking to me. That wasn't it. It started with being really busy. And then, well, you know, we were buying a house, selling a house, uh, we were you know, just, I don't know, I'm not even going to go into all the details, but life was busy. It was crazy. So then I kind of started some of that white noise in God's way. So I kind of quit hearing him a little bit. And then I get into this cycle of, well, I'm busy, so I spend a little less time in my word or a little less whatever. And you began to replace that time in your word with other things in life. That's kind of the white noise. Anything that gets in the way and takes that precious time that you need to be communicating with him, it's going to cost you a little bit. And for a while, you'll never notice it. But later when you're like, hey, I need you, God. He's like, hey, you've been declining my calls. Uh, now you're calling me and you're upset that, that I'm not doing a party trick for you on the spot. From the outside, it looks kind of ridiculous, but we, we do it sometimes. Maybe not in a big way, but a little bit has the same effect in that we don't hear from him. Lately, I've been praying for rain. I've been praying for people. I've been praying for stuff. Sometimes I don't get the same results as if I've been digging in. When you open this, you dig it, <clears throat> and you dig in deeper on this, it begins to, it, it's like a light turned on. So, uh, self-inflicted mostly. But uh, we, we, we've, been, we've been through the drought. We've been through this, we're going through this tough time where we need to hear from God. We're going through all kinds of struggles. We, we set ourselves up for failure. It's like a self-perpetuating cycle. We'll try not to trip on my own words here. But so we, 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 we get busy. We kind of tune God out. We're like, yeah, I'll, I'll catch up with you later, God. Like an old friend. We're like, hey, I'll catch up with you later. It's almost like a most important text message where you're like, I got to give a good answer here. But then you end up giving no answer at all because you were going to try to give a good answer. So that's like God. You're like, I'm, I'm going to try to talk to you, but in a good way. And not just kind of a sort of way, but then you end up not talking to him at all because you were putting that off and putting it off, and then it leads to a cycle. And I'm like, well, I didn't hear from him, so I'm not talking to him tomorrow. But he's like, I didn't talk to you. It's like a good friend. You, you don't. He is your good friend. He's your best advocate you got, by the way. 
So we, we get this cycle. We're like, well, I didn't get what I prayed for later. And from the outside looking in, hearing us sitting amongst us, it's, it, it seems easy. But when you get out in the world, it's mean. It's cruel. Sometimes it beats you, hits you in the nose. It's going to. I promise. You better have a God that's your advocate. You better be talking to him and hearing from him. So that's what we're here learning about in kind of some tough times. I've got a couple of main passages to address with a short passage before, short passage at the end, and a couple of main ones in the middle. It won't take too long. And uh, Pastor Jared brought one of them. Pastor Jared brought some messages lately on uh, from the book of Daniel. And so Daniel is kind of one of my recharge things because I look at all the things that I don't do right. And I compare them to Daniel, I'm like, whoa, there's a lot of room for improvement. So it helps me there. I look at some, uh, some hard-nosed stuff in James, Second Chronicles, and then Daniel, just more of what did Daniel do that I don't do. So don't compare yourself to other people. You always fail. You're never going to be good enough for people. They'll always let you down. I'll let you down. Everybody will. But God will not, and the characters in the Bible make an excellent pattern to compare against. And so that's what I, being a man, I compare against Daniel. He's a good dude. I mean, he was... Daniel saw God work, and he heard God work in a lot of big ways. We'll get to that in a minute. Jumping first to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13. This deals right with the drought we're in. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a, a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them and I will heal their land. It's a lot of things that I could do. It's very self-explanatory. Some of them I see immediate room for improvement. Okay, God, I got you. That's kind of straight to the point. Now, there's a lot of context there. I encourage you to go back and read the context. I'm going to cover a mile a minute here for the sake of time. But go back and read Second Chronicles 7. It's good stuff. And... I've been going back in some of the Old Testament, and then I like to tie it in with the New Testament. It's amazing how well it tied. I used to think of it differently. I won't get into that, but this stuff is good. There's some good wisdom. Um, so we see that in Second Chronicles, uh, humble, pray, get rid of your sin, do all these things. And said, so, oh, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. All right, that gives me a good, uh, that's a path. That's a path. That's a start. And uh, as I mentioned, we're also going to look at Daniel next. So Daniel... Starting off, I'm looking at not in, I'm not I'm, I tried to do a pattern, not a bunch of one line or scriptures, but some pattern off of what, like I said, what did Daniel do that I don't do? Like, God, clearly, I have many ways that I fail you. I, I think many of us can agree wherever you're at and to what degree of spectrum. There are a lot of things that are lacking, and there's always room for improvement. I don't ever want to be. In my walk, one of those guys who says, well, I've always been this way, and that's just the way I'm going to be. Or you can't change me because that's the way I am. As a Christian, I beg to differ. I should be sharpened all the time because I get rough edges, and they got to be sharpened because they, they're, they're rough. They're just, they got to be spit out. The trash has to be taken out daily. So I look at this on Daniel. What did Daniel do? Um, learning about Daniel, he's a man that was consistent. Ooh. A man who sought God, a man who heard from God in those crunch times when it mattered most. And those men who served around him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they also heard from God when it mattered. They had different gifts, but they heard from God in a big way. So some of those examples Pastor Jared used the other day, it inspired me to kind of tie this with a little tie into this sermon. The first one was in chapter 2 where King Nebuchadnezzar had taken over Jerusalem. He made Daniel and the other men and some others his servants where Nebuchadnezzar was about to, he had a, he needed somebody to interpret a dream, and he had these little tantrums and whatnot, you know, and he, he was about to chop some heads. He was about to uh, put all his advisors to death if they couldn't interpret the dream that he had, and uh, God delivered, that night, God delivered a vision to Daniel on the spot, and it saved them all, and it was miraculous. I'm like, I want to hear God talk like that. I want to hear him. So let We'll look at some more things that God did for Daniel. The time of Daniel, this is just some of them. The time of Daniel chapter 3 where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to dishonor God by even pretending to worship him an image of gold that he had made. The law was you got to drop and worship the image of gold. They're like, nope, I serve the one true God. No, thank you. My God will take care of me. Oh, I'm like, we heard about this from Pastor Jared. I'm piggybacking, but it, it inspired 
But I'm like, Dad, that boldness. I, I, I refuse. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm too tired. I don't have two minutes this morning to drop and pray. And then I see these. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I would say a little room for improvement would be an understatement. So they had to either drop and worship golden image. I would have been like, you know, whatever, I'll pretend. They didn't. They let, let them be thrown into this furnace of fire like y'all. It was so many times hotter than normal. Killed the guards that threw them in. Not only were they saved from it, but Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth man among them who he claimed, I believe he says, was like a son of the gods. It was right there with them. Talk about seeing God work. Not only did you say, no, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. God will take care of me. And they said, by the way, even if he doesn't, God's still good, basically, to paraphrase it. They're like, hey, I know where I'm going, so we're going to follow my God. Because he lasts after death. Your stuff is trash. And that made the king mad, mad, mad. So they saw God work. Long story short, he pulled them out of the furnace. We heard about that before. Then we saw in chapter 6 where Daniel himself, defiled, he defied a law set in place by King Darius not to worship any other person or especially God besides King Darius. King Darius had an ego trip as well. And we won't get off on that. But So Daniel just did what Daniel does. And this is why they set it up to trap Daniel. Well, one thing you notice when you go through kind of reading the fine print, Daniel says he did what he did every day. He was up there looking out the window. One of the three times a day he got down on his knees and he prayed, he humbled himself. He had no humility issues. He knew God was God. God was mighty. He was not. So he was doing what he always did. And he was praying. He's like, well, I heard if you pray, you're going to get killed. But I'd rather be killed for the sake of God. So this was their offense against Daniel, that he was praying. Oh, I would wish that was the best, the worst offense that I had against me. And so that, that was Daniel's offense. That's why I'm patterning after him. So I'm like, that, that's, that's commendable. So uh, they threw him, uh, threw him into the lion's den, as you read about. And God sent an angel. When, when, da when Daniel prayed, Daniel also prayed for help. But when Daniel prayed, God sent an angel and shut the mouth of the lions. That's, that's kind of a, that's seeing God work. If, if you see an angel show up, he's like, hey, I'm here to help. God sent me. Like, oh, cool. Daniel at this point must have been like, yeah, that's awesome. I've seen this before. We've been through this stuff. And so, so he, he spends the night with the lions. And he's an old man at this point. I mean, Daniel's seen some. He's been around the sun a few times. So uh, we saw that Daniel, uh, we, we, we saw him have visions all the time straight from God. Elaborate visions. Visions that were prophecy. Visions that came true. He had dreams. He interpreted dreams. That was a gift that God gave him. And then uh, Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Um, well, before I get into that, is, so the point being, it's worth looking to me. At what did Daniel do different than us? Why, why am I not hearing during that phase? Why, is Daniel, why did Daniel see everything he asked for and why did I not? Well, some of it's pretty obvious. But they saw him work in huge ways. Let's look at some of the things Daniel did different real quick. Right off the bat, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, we saw that Daniel, he refused to defile himself with the royal food and drink of the king. And God told him it wasn't so much a real thing as what God told him. Well, it was a rule of his people at that time, but God told him don't do it, so he didn't do it. No bones about it. He made a sacrifice. He didn't defile himself. He had discipline and obedience. Simple, discipline and obedience. So it was an overall condition of that discipline and obedience that he had that kept him from defiling himself and he didn't even have to, let me back up he didn't really even have to think about it he just did it so it said after that after these men obeyed him in this manner they received all kinds of gifts and knowledge and they could understand or daniel himself could understand dreams of all kinds it says in daniel chapter 6 Verse 10 and 11, before Daniel was thrown into that lion's den for praying to God, that was his offense. We saw him doing just what he always did. Like I said, three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to God, just as he had done before. Then these men went in as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So he humbled himself. He took it seriously. He did it three times every day. <laughs> Me, I see sometimes, I'm like, I'm too tired. I'm too sleepy. 
uh, work call in and I kind of need to get a jump on it. I'm not a morning person. I'm not a morning person. Nights beat me up. Last night I got a whopping three hours of sleep, maybe four this morning. I did not. You can't judge your life or your walk with Jesus based on the way you feel. Your emotions will lie to you. They will whoop you around. You'll, you'll, there's going to be days that are good and there's going to be a lot of days that are trash. That's the short time we're on earth. We've got a big time in heaven that we should be leading up to. Daniel didn't let the way he felt each day. He just got down three times and he got real and he humbled himself and said, Mighty God, help me. That's what he did each time. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 1 to 3, Daniel received a vision about a great war that was coming. This is the last one I've got as an example here from Daniel. He needed to hear from God, and it says, At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips. I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. Apparently, the lotion is an old man helped. I, I don't know what the significance of that was, but he needed it. And hard times showed up. He needed to hear from God. He knew bad things were coming. And so he refrained from some basic luxuries that allowed him to rely and focus more upon God. And that's what he did. He focused more upon God, and it worked. Well, we can extrapolate that now, I think, in a good way. Whatever, it could be different things, different people. But you may have, sometimes it may be worth giving up something that's in the way so you'll hear from him better. I'm going to try it. Finally, in James chapter 1, verse 19 through 26, we look at the last, or the last main passage, big passage on this. And it, it talks about how, well, James, I like it because it hits you It hits you in seven different places, seven different kinds of smoke. It hits you different places at one time. It kind of roughs you up a little bit, and then, it, and then it helps you up, and it sends you on your way. So it tells you right off the bat, so, hey, you need to do this different. It gets right to the point, short book, right to the point. I love it. James chapter 1, I'm going to read through that. Starting in verse 19, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. All right? Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil, okay, that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Ooh, that's a big one. Don't just read the word to read the word and then pretend like you checked it off. You've you got to do what it says. Okay, that, 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 that's some cause and effect. I see it. Do not, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, anyone who listens to the word that does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. You immediately forget what you just read. Have you done that before? <laughs> I, I have before. They... If they do what it says, they'll be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight ring on their tongues deceive themselves, so their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. That kind of ties in with David, keeping yourself from being polluted by the world, keeping a ring on your tongue, your anger, your sin, all these things. I can draw, I can connect the dots here in my own life. I don't know about you guys. I can connect the dots. I'm not saying every bad thing comes with sin. That's not what I'm getting at here. Some things happen. But when I see a pattern where I'm not hearing from God, then I'm, I, it could be a pattern there. That could be the reason. Very much scripturally backed here. So most of that's pretty self-explanatory. Daniel, all these people, they, they kept themselves from being polluted by the world. They kept themselves, they, they turned from their evil ways. Or it's Daniel, and then the scripture said, turn from their evil ways. They did what it said. They saw results. Jumping ahead a little bit here for the sake of time. Oh, and before I get out of that, they, they avoided meaningless, meaningless religion. So their religion, as the world sees it, is, is, it says basically it's trash. But religion is a true relationship with God. Where you got an appointment each and every day. This is, this is not just about me. If I get balled up and about how it applies to me and bless my heart, I'm going to fail. I'm going to be depressed if I ball it up about me. But if I get into not religion but relationship where each day I'm like, God, I may or may not feel good today, but what is your calling for me today? And you begin to look out in a way of love that only God can provide. And I see faces and I see, like I get pumped because I'm like, they're totally different for me. 
We might not even get along, but God's got a huge purpose for that person. They can fill a niche in a puzzle that I can't. I'm terrible at this. They're awesome at that. I can't reach those people. They can. Vice versa, so on. You see your own failures, and you build on it, and you see other people's strengths, and you come out of love. You listen to them, and you want to approach them, and you see them as incredibly valuable. No matter what their wealth, social status, gender, anything, they're valuable because God is reaching through you and he's speaking through you. When you're hearing from him, then you start seeing what God intends. If the world could see what God intends, we wouldn't be fighting. We've got so many divisions because we're not seeing what God intends. We're not seeing people with the same importance that God sees with each of every. He sees you all as incredibly valuable. And when God runs that through your veins, you're like, if only everybody could see this, it would solve a lot of problems. Finally, there's one last verse here in passage. It says, John chapter 8, verse 47, addresses one of the last possible reasons. when, And I've got to hit it while I'm here. When you're not hearing from God, is that whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you don't hear from God is you don't belong to God. There may be some out there who's tried this religion thing, tried this God thing, it just didn't work. Maybe you couldn't be good enough to follow all the rules. It's, it's tough if you're going about it that route. Maybe you tried a little trial run and just dipped your toe in the water. In some cases, at some point in your lives, you got literally dipped in the water. You got dunked in the water, whatever you did. But you act like it. you hoped it would give you eternal life insurance. You hoped maybe that if you tried what they said, what they said, it would save you. But maybe it didn't work. Maybe you had no actual salvation. I challenge that today you've got a chance. Today you've got a chance for a real relationship with God. Not some religion that's meaningless, but something that is real and right and that where you can talk to God and you can hear from God. Others may feel like God wouldn't allow them to be saved because of what you've done. There's a lot out there. Guilt enters into the equation. I remember talking to a guy the other day, just a couple weeks ago, out of state. The guy had, uh, he was a combat hero. And he had had a hard time adjusting to civilian life like many do. And he had been through living hell. I won't go into his whole story, but as he told it, and his scars all over his body backed it up. I'm going to say this guy was telling a legit story. And we talked a long time. And after I, he could tell, he said, something literally, something's a little different about you. So that opened the door. I'm like, oh, that's, that opened it. You can't force it on people. But once he asked me, he said, something's different about you. Tell me about you. So I told him a little bit about my God. <laughs> I, I won't say exactly what he said, but to the effect of, if your God's real, then I'm screwed. <laughs> I said, okay, why is that? And he said, well, a lot of things. And I kept digging. I was listening to him. I didn't tell him much about me. It didn't matter. I'd been through some, not, not the depth of what he had, but he said uh, when he was in combat, I'm not going to botch the story and get where if his Fallujah or where he was at. But there was a bomb, there was shooting, there was all these things. One, one time in particular stood out in his mind. There was a wounded perpetrator laying in the street after they cleaned up all their own people and gotten the medical attention. He had bone fragments in his arm from his buddy, and he had some trauma going on there. But there was a guy laying over there, one of the ones who had done the damage. And naturally, some of the soldiers are like, well, he ain't going to live, but just let him die. Let him suffer. After what he did to our whole platoon, just let him suffer. And he could not get past the fact he walked up, and this is... This is real, but he walked up and put a few rounds on his head and watched it. And he is part, partly out of mercy and partly out of hate. But he said, you're God. If he's real, I'm in trouble. And the man was tormented. He even jumped off a bridge a couple years ago, he told me, because he was just trying to get rid of the stuff in his life. Most people jumped off of that bridge trying to land in the water and miss the cement. He was trying to hit the cement and miss the water, but he overshot his mark, and he's still mad about it because it broke his legs instead of killing him. Why do I use this? Because there are people out there in that situation. I told him about Paul. I wish I could tell you this guy got saved, but it's no easy, most of the time it's not an easy two hours and praise God. Well, I might stay after this old boy. We might, you know, a little Venmo or something might help him out, but I'm going to reach out to him. This is going to be a project, and it's up to God. It has nothing to do with me. But there's people out there who think that God can't reach them with what they've done. And I told him about Paul who killed Christians. That's kind of what he did. This church was like a newborn baby, and it was growing, and Christians were spreading, and he was over there killing them. Not easy. He was killing them in a bad way. I said, I don't think you're going to top that. You probably did that old boy a favor. It's bad, but 
regardless, I don't care what you did, God can reach you. And he's got a beautiful I said, you know what? I would challenge that God's got a more beautiful purpose for you right now, living on the streets with the circle of influence that you've got in a state that in an area that doesn't have many Christians, probably than I do. Because some of my stuff stinks. I've had every chance in the world and I still fail him sometimes, and you've had every chance to be failed, and you're still here talking to me. God's got a purpose for you. And I told him, and he said, I don't know about your God yet, but I like you. And so we talked, and I'm going to reach out to him. But there's people like that in here today. That's my point. There's people that think you've done too much. You've crossed too many bridges. There's not too many bridges. God wipes out bridges. He, he dynamites bridges. I said, come on. And that's what I'm asking. You've got a chance, whether you've been in church, whether you've been dunked, whether if, if you're not hearing from God and you've never heard from God, Let's look at the chance right now might be the time to get that right. I'm not going to go through a whole bunch of flowery emotional deal. I'm just going to tell you, search your soul. If you don't know, if you know him, let's get it right. If you've gone too many bridges, if you've gone too far, if you've done too many things, now's the time. There's a direct path between you and God, but if you wait till the noise of the world and your hearing gets cluttered, it, it'll pass you by, I promise. Take the time when you got it because it may disappear. Every one of us is going to meet God face to face if the worship team wants to come up here. Every one of us is going to meet God face to face one day and it won't be pretty. We're going to have to give account of everything we've done. It probably won't be pretty. Not one of us has not done some things that we're really not proud of. Not one of us has done some things that are not sinful. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You have that gift, but you've got to take hold of it. It's not just going to catch you from grandma's faith or something you said when you didn't really know what you were saying when you were four or seven or ten or twenty. Some of us have been there. We got dunked and it didn't take and we never changed. I challenge you to look at where you're at real quick. If you are saved, you know it. Join with me right now, please, as I try to hear from God, as we try to hear from God more, because I need it. We need it. We need it as an area. We need it as a group of God's people. We need it as a country. We need it in so many ways right now. We need love that is from God. We need to be loved to the world. We need to have a mission to go reach people each day and quit getting balled up in our own troubles because they're there. They're going to be there. We need to hear from God. Join with me, please, following some of this roadmap here and look at, there's a dozen, two dozen, four dozen more places in the Bible that tell you how to hear from God better. It is, it seems intimidating but it's not join with me in following this so that we can hear from god better we need him right now if you don't know him one more time today's the day we got people up here to pray with you you can reach out by a connection card you can call us i'll plaster my you can find pastor jared's cell numbers on facebook and he can send whatever you can find somebody or you can talk to god yourself but it's better if somebody's there with you if you don't know him it's the time I'm going to end with that. Dear Lord, many of us in here are not worthy, Lord. Lord, we're not worthy. We've forsaken you. We haven't heard from you at times, Lord. We don't deserve you. Lord, you're a good God. You're a good God. You've been better to us than we deserve, Lord. When times get tough, we need you more. We need to hear from you, Lord. I ask that you help us to do our part to hear from you, Lord. Lord, I ask... There's, there's some, some people out here right now that don't know you, Lord. I've been there before. There's no shame in it, Lord. I ask that you would give them the boldness right now to come forward today. The time is now, Lord. We're all going to meet you one day. None of us will be pretty for it, but we're either covered by your shed blood or you're going to stay away from me. I never actually knew you. Lord, I ask the time be now for those that don't. Thank you for being a good God, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be here. In your holy name we pray. Amen.